Are you tired of hauling watering cans back and forth only to see your plants still withering away by the sun's intense rays? Have you become entangled and trapped by never-ending irrigation hoses? Is your water bill making you think twice about starting that vegetable garden? Then we have the solution. This new and improved product is made of state-of-the-art nanofibers that not only trap moisture and protect the soil from excessive heat, but it is 100% biodegradable, improving soil fertility and texture. It's called mulch! And for three easy payments of mulch has so many benefits, it may seem too good to be true, especially since mulch can be obtained for free. If you have not been mulching, now might be the time to start. We'll see why. I'm that the only thing I have to do now is wait for harvest time while watering the garden as it grows. I would rather do more of the waiting and less of the watering. So there is one more missing part to this planting process that I feel is essential and without it you could be setting yourself up for failure. Mulching. What is mulch? It's any matter that you cover the soil with. So it could be wood chips, dead leaves, grass clippings, even rocks and gravel. I'm using grass clippings I collect after the lawn is mown. Number one reason to start using mulch? Water. A 1 to 3 inch layer of mulch can dramatically increase the water content on the top layer of soil. It shields the soil from the sun's rays, preventing the evaporation of moisture. Because of this moist environment, more roots grow in the top layer of soil, which happens to usually be the most fertile zone, giving your plants a boost in growth. Ensuring enough mulch is somewhat of a challenge. But, by looking at your surroundings with new eyes, you may find great sources for cheap or free mulch. I'm scavenging. There's a public parking lot across from my house with grass around it that is mown every three to four months, just when the grass is big enough that it creates beautiful hay. I wait for it to dry for a few days, then I go out with a wheelbarrow and rake to collect this precious, albeit overlooked, resource. This is reason number two for using mulch. To use materials that would otherwise be treated as refuse, something people are accustomed to collect, to tidy up their lawn and throw away, as a beneficial resource. Other possible mulch sources could be straw if you live in rural areas, or wood chips from a tree service company if you live in the city. Fallen leaves can also be used. I like to use grass clippings, not only because it happens to be a more abundant resource where I live, but because unlike wood chips, it breaks down faster, improving the soil texture and feeding it. This would be reason number three. As mulch breaks down, it increases the amount of organic matter in the soil, making it less compact, easier to work with and easier for roots to grow. If you're using leaves or wood chips, it is better to let them break down for at least a year. Freshly fallen leaves are high in lignin and thus take more time to break down. They tend to create a compacted and permeable layer that, from my experience, ends up attracting lots of slugs. Fresh wood chips can rob nitrogen from the soil as its carbon-rich matter starts to decompose. I apply a good blanket layer, about 2 inches thick, to ensure good moisture retention. The stable moisture right in the root zone of plants will increase the amount of life in the soil, bringing up more earthworms that fertilize the soil with their castings and increasing the population of beneficial fungi, protozoa and bacteria that break down nutrients for plant absorption. A protozoa and bacteria. Well, Sonny, I'll tell you the time when your forefathers colonized this land. See, there was no mulch. You young kids have it good. Those were terrible times. Look, Grandpa. Oh no, it's the sun. It burns. This increase of beneficial life forms in the soil is reason number four for mulching. As for reason number five, by protecting the soil from rain and irrigation, not only you prevent erosion and soil compaction, you also diminish the prevalence of certain fungal diseases like early tomato blight. Fungal spores hide in soil and are lifted to leaves as water drops splash up. This makes an imitating nature, where productive soils are always covered. 
we can achieve good results fighting pests through biodiversity. Increasing the population of beneficial and predatory life forms can help control pests. The goal is to get to equilibrium and of course you will end up losing a crop here and there but you will end up gaining a lot more. The sixth and final reason which happens to be one of the most important if you want to establish low maintenance gardens is that mulching drastically reduces the amount of weeds by keeping the soil covered by a couple of inches of mulch weed seeds in the soil are shaded out and are less likely to sprout now all I have to do besides occasional watering is to wait for harvesting by following these simple techniques you too can try to start growing more of your own food even if you've never done it before now is the time to start. Join me next time to learn practical tips to growing lettuce and don't forget to subscribe to Suburban Homestead. I'm Amy Grisak. I'm a garden writer in Great Falls, Montana and today we're at one of our community gardens so I can show you some different op options that people use as mulch. Mulch is the magic ingredient in most gardens throughout the country because it helps suppress weeds and also keeps in moisture levels. And with some of the hot, dry summers parts of the country have been experiencing, it is a valuable addition to your garden. And it's one way that we can get corn to grow like this in Montana as well as everything else growing in our very, very short season. One of the easiest and cheapest ways to mulch is to utilize grass clippings. Now when you're using gr grass clippings, you do have to be very careful. You don't want to use them from a lawn that's recently been treated with herbicides, pesticides, or, or other chemicals. So you want to wait conservatively at least three cuttings before you use them on your garden. Some people even wait more just to be safe because if it's still in the grass, you put it on your plants, all your plants are going to die. So kind of counterproductive but very simple to use. You don't want to put grass on too thickly because it creates a barrier that moisture can't get through. So put it down maybe a half an inch at a time and it really it's nice because it breaks down well. And another thing you can do when you're using, utilizing grass is to put down newspaper, about six, seven, eight layers of newspaper and then put down your thin layer of grass mulch and that'll help suppress the weeds it allows water to come through and yet by the end of the season it breaks down. So it's a really nice weed barrier and helps keep that moisture in. So you just put the grass around your plants and spread it out and that's it. Very, very simple. Like the grass clippings, the straw is fantastic to use too. This lady did a great thing. Love the raised beds and I also love how she utilized the straw in between everything. She put down newspaper and then she has about three or four inches of straw on top of this which is great. She eliminates a good hunk of the weeds. Any that are here pull out really easy and it really keeps the moisture in. So straw is a great way to go. You can start with three inches and in areas where you really don't weeds to, want weeds to grow or you really want to protect that soil, you can put four, five, six inches easy and it's going to do really great things for your garden. And this is where we are trying out utilizing bark chips as a mulch. These are kind of on the small side. You don't want the big chunky clunky ones because they don't break down as well but we use these to mulch our potatoes and we're going to leave the mulch in place the bark mulch in place throughout the winter and into next spring now the thing when you're using wood is you don't want to mix it into the soil because it will actually rob nitrogen out of the soil as it attempts to break down but if you just use it on top and plant through it then it helps keep that soil moist while it's creating a compost while it's breaking down on the top and it really does wonders to keep this ground cooler, keep that moisture in, and really does improve the soil after a number of years. So bark, bark, bark mulch or wood chips are a really good way to go.